like these guys have spent 40 practices now getting ready for it to play games, whatever, you know, just shy of 40. What's the level of anticipation of finally getting to hit the court together? Oh, man. Guys can't wait. We've been beating up on each other here for so long. We just want a chance to beat up on somebody else. Yeah. So, I mean, guys are just hungry to get on the floor and compete. Where are you at in terms of kind of coming together, building chemistry, um, you know, playing as a team? I think we're getting there. Um, I think these next two games here, you know, this week and next week are really let us know exactly, you know, through the evaluation process, exactly where we're at. But, I mean, of course, you know, it's the beginning of the season. We're nowhere where we want to be. So. What can you learn from practices, and what do you need to play some games to find out? Um, you know, you kind of really learn, uh, you know, the spots on the floor where you can score, um, even defensively where you're supposed to be. Um, I think even within the game, um, you know, it's, it's just 40 minutes of just playing basketball. You know what I mean? Drills and going to get up against your teammate and making each other better is great. But I think there's nothing better than just playing. So you're a Portland kid. You're going to play against a team coach, coached by Luke Jackson yeah. on Sunday. What is that like for you? I imagine you grew up watching. You were probably oh, 10 years old at when yeah, yeah, this no. heyday. What's it like I remember all those against? teams with him and Freddie and uh, Luke. and I mean, watching those guys playing the Elite Eight, you know, stuff like that. So it's definitely special. It's, it's almost like a, a you know, local legend on the sidelines. So, I mean, that's, that's going to be real cool. And, you know, it's just going to make you want to compete that much harder. Have you ever interacted with him at all? A little bit. You know, he came to some open gyms and actually played a couple games with us. And I got to play on the same team with us, with him, thankfully. But, uh, yeah, you know, it's, it's fun. You know, he's a real good guy. You know, I wish him a lot of luck over there. How cool was it to play with Luke Jackson? It was fun. I mean, he, he still has he still has that, that sweet jumper that everybody remembers. And uh, he passed the ball really well. Um, that athleticism is kind of gone. But, uh <laughs> <laughs> But uh, that's to be expected. But uh, no, it, it's, he's still got that good competitive spirit. So I'm sure you'll even see that from him still on the, on the sidelines on Sunday. You're a guy that's gone through practices for four years. What's your impressions of the extended period of practice time? Um, you know, there's some things you like about it, some things you don't. You know, it's nice to have two days off in a week. But um, even just the more time that you have with your teammates, I feel like. Is, uh, is real special. I mean, even just the off the court stuff is almost where that chemistry starts to build before you even touch a basketball and get on the court with them. So, I mean, there's, there's been some good parts. Um, you know, there's been some, some growing pains also, but for the most part, it's all been positive. With the new transfer class, including yourself, without having played a game, how deep do you think this team can get? I know a typical, typical team has about an eight man rotation. I mean, how deep do you think this team can go? You know, I, I think we're about 10 guys deep. I think the, the special part about our group is that um, experience is wise. You know, we're about seven to eight guys deep. And right now, at least in this time period, with all the, the one and duns and, you know, two and duns, I mean, you, you lack that experience and that leadership on teams. And I feel like we have overabundance of it. So uh, it's kind of in the process of designating who's Chiefs and who are Indians, but, yeah. but we, we definitely have a lot of Chiefs. So. Have you said that? I mean, Dominic and Damian have now been, are now sophomores, but they're kind of considered to be the veterans on this oh, team, yeah. aside from, you know, they've been here. So what have they brought to the table, and how impressed have you been from them? You know, I've been really impressed. I mean, they're still young guys, but they lead with such maturity. And uh, I, I think that's been the, the biggest part of this whole transition for a lot of us new guys learning the new system. It's, it's been able to pick up like that because they're doing their job and they're helping you figure out what you need to be doing. And, you know, this, this past month, I think, you know, Damien and, da, I mean, uh, DA definitely deserve a lot of credit for that, for kind of getting guys in the right spots and, and it really has set the tone. And they're, they're a big reason for this, this kind of culture of basketball right now, too. So. Do you think that's an advantage for you guys, having so many transfers? I mean, a lot of people think that's kind of a negative that you guys will have to kind of build that team chemistry, but in a lot of ways that could uh, add a variety to your team that other teams might not have. Yeah, no, definitely. I mean, you know, there's probably some disadvantages, but I mean, at the end of the day, it's just basketball. And, you know, me and Jason and Rich and, you know, Wade and, John, and like, these are guys that have been playing college basketball for a while. So, I mean, as opposed to having guys who've been doing it for a while or, you know, a bunch of new, exciting, coming freshmen. Mm -hmm. You know, I guess pick your poison. But uh, I, I think that just the leadership and um, the experience probably outweighs all of that. Can you talk a little about Joseph Young and kind of your impressions of him as a player? Oh, Joe's great. I mean, offensively, he's a handful. Nobody wants to guard him. Nobody can guard him. Um, he hopefully he gets eligible, and he'll definitely be that factor for us. Where he'll, he's just kind of an unstoppable force on the perimeter. Um, and defensively, he can guard. 
You know, you, you always run to those guys who can score and don't play much defense. And you know, he's the exact opposite. I mean, he can score great and, you know, will lock guys up on the other end, talks really well. And he's a good leader as well. And you talk to him recently? Um, all? Yeah, all the time. I mean, What's he kind of like as a person? As a person? Um, he's, he's the jokester, I'd say. Uh, he, he's definitely uh, going to be the smack talker you'll see on the floor for sure. But uh, I think it's great because it, it – it helps bring out confidence in other guys and inspires a lot of guys to do some things that they may not have been able to do before. So how excited are you to play with them? Oh, I'm really excited. Yeah. Really excited. Are you a chief or are you? Anyone? Um, <laughs> I have to admit, yeah. First getting here, you know, it's kind of getting my feet wet. You know, I had to kind of, uh, you know, pull some of that experience back and kind of be an Indian and, you know, just listen and, you know, find out how this offense works, how the defense works, where I need to be, and. Uh, where I can pick my spots, and um, I, th I think I'm developed into a chief now. But uh, no, I definitely, definitely had to work my way up. So, a couple of weeks back, uh, Dana was talking about that the Pac-12 was about eight teams. He thinks eight teams can make noise in the, in the NCAA tournament this year. Coming from a different conference, what what do you see in this Pac-12? And do you think this could be, the, you know, as a Portland guy, the Pac-12 has been a little bit down. Do you think this could be the year that they kind of get back into the national scene? Oh, definitely. I know we got a lot of young talent and some real talented veterans that you know had. Probably NBA aspirations and opportunities come back to the conference. So, I mean, the, the conference, without a doubt, is probably as talented as it's been these last couple of years. But um, I know, um, you know, coming from the Mountain West, this non-conference schedule is just as important as the conference schedule because when a team, say from the Mountain West, plays a Pac-12 team, you know, you're up and you're excited and you're ready to go. And um, I, I think that's maybe just that youth that the Pac-12 has had in the past couple of years mm -hmm. may have been a factor against you know, losing some of those type of games. Okay. But uh, I mean, it's definitely as most talented as, as it's been, and uh, I'm really excited to be a part of it. Going back to Joseph, I mean, does that affect preparation at all when you guys have a, a key player like that that's in limbo? Um, maybe slightly, but you know, at the same time, we're so deep. Um, you know, we just plug another guy in who's you know just as talented and. You know, we just kind of keep things moving. So, I mean, I, I say again, that's just the, the benefit of being able to play maybe 10 guys. You know, um, it, it doesn't hurt as bad when one of your better players is, you know, not able to play. As a forward, what have you seen from Elgin Cook and, and Richard? I know um, uh, Elgin's the son of a former NBA All-Star. I mean, what, what kind of things have you seen from them that, that could potentially help this team? Um, Elgin. He's really going to help. I mean, he's such a high-energy guy. Um, you know, he can he can be one of those um, guys with high rebound numbers. Um, you know, scores real efficiently around the basket, and I mean, he's a great defender, like high major athlete. Um, he he's going to bring a lot. And Rich is a lot of the same. You know, great rebounder, high major athlete, and uh, he he just brings that still senior leadership. You know, this may be his first time playing Division One basketball. But, I mean, the kid's sharp as nails. So, I mean, I think it'll be great, a great fit, even with the both of them in, in the mixture of our nucleus. So.